you know, it's inch by inch, it's a cinch. Put me in the groove yard, Kijana. Put me in the groove yard. Got something to say about that. So I want to welcome you all to the groove yard, which is our virtual video podcast with art, music, and creativity. It's an interview series hosted by myself, Mr. Roscoe Lee Owens. You know, you are in this jazz zone, and we are jazz abrasion, talking about the celebration of all. So I want to start with this. I just want to give you eight ways to celebrate small wins in life, because it's step by step. So first, don't sweat the small stuff. Understand? Don't worry about others. Practice self-care. Treat yourself. Create healthy habits. Be present and always share your wins and be proud. Take me on in. That's what I had to say this morning from the groove yard. And here we go with the opportunity to share this morning with a great friend of mine, an awesome reverend, an awesome Baba, a brother by the name of Dr. Clarence, Easy Oku Washington. My brother, you can see the royalty right there. Royalty standing straight up in the middle. You know, you're a blessing, brother. Thank you so much Thank for uh, coming Thank into you. the groove yard this morning. And Thank uh, you. one of the things that really tied me to you instantly way back when was the groove yard to me is like Sankofa since I grew up there. My son yes, grew up there because he was a little baby when I had my first business there. And then when right. I came back one time, the first time when I met you, I said, wait a minute, this is the same space that I occupied when I had my business. And we both occupied the same space at a different time in the time zone in Lemur Park. Right. And then I got to work for you. Uh, you were educating many, many people and you were doing so many fantastic things. And it said, we can. I said, wait a minute. My thing says join forces. We can? Yes. So there we go. I just want to take it back to the essence and welcome you to our show, uh, uh, Dr. Ezioku. Well, thank you. And I would like to make um, one enhancement in terms of you did not work with me. We worked together. We worked for each other. And that's Indeed. the whole way. Uh, that was not a plantation. It was <laughs> it was a salutation when people came together working for the benefit of our intellect and mind. So it's a collaborative. It was we and team, and ain't no I and team. So I recognize you being one of the starring team players and allowing us to go out and teaming with ignorance and, and, and uh, embracing the community uh, with knowledge and basic fundamentals of uh, of understanding and just basic education. So I'm really grateful that I had opportunity and continue to have the opportunity to be made with me, exposed to yourself, your beautiful wife, your handsome son. Uh, I can see where the legacy continues because this, the old saying, the fruit never falls too far from the tree. And I can see that in your in your dynamic son and your goddess as well, sir. So uh, thank you for the opportunity for having me come on and uh, share my little bit of in information and uh, continue to be part of this collaborative effort. Improving, knowing thyself and improving thyself. Yes. But well, that's why when when we had the opportunity to, to come <clears> together <throat> and work together as a team, we ended up doing something so fantastic with a thought that came to your head that you designed and laid out and <laughs> produced <clears throat> to give people an understanding of the value that we have and the land that we have with Colonel Allensworth. I want you to yes, talk sir. about the one that we were all able to participate in some years ago and how oh, it, yeah. how it is coming up to do something else again. Well, let's frame it this way by um, doing something and being a member of the uh, Allensworth group and attending there, uh, being an active participant, I decided to 
enhance the process. And like anything else, it was a roadblock. And we decided to create what I call the first blues festival. And not, you know, I know a few folks, but not not celebrity. And to happen to um, be introduced to uh, Barbara Morrison and then uh, I was able to meet uh, Linda Hopkins. And I went by Linda's house and we talked. And uh, uh, so it was good to have her part of the process. Then went to Roscoe Lee Owens and he was part of our dynamic team uh, as we made the construct and put together the booklet, the design of the 2008 uh, Allensworth Blues Festival with Barbara Morrison, Linda Hopkins, and my good friend, Billy Red, and um, Mr. Dr. Holmes, uh, uh, Luscious. We had um, a few other um, actors uh, and, and performers. And it was a great day and it was a wonderful time. And as time moved on, that was in 2008. And morphing up to today, um, since the township had, didn't have the amount of attendance that it had, uh, we wanted to more or less, um, I was called about a month ago and asked could I come be, be part of the Friends of Allensworth. I said, no problem. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we were on a clear ground. And um, there was a new transition, and they had a new president. And uh, with that new president, um, brought me in. And I'm now the current vice president of the uh, Friends of Allensworth statewide. And one of my first things was that we only have four events. The town is not as active as it should be. Let us bring other four events. And our first event we talked about says, well, let's go ahead and bring back the gospel festival. Let's bring back uh, the blues festival. Let's bring back uh, the scat the rap. Let's bring back uh, the historical uh, legacy. And then also include the having the marketplace in Allensworth, our first black town. And understand the scope of the legacy and let folks understand, number one, we had our Palm Springs with Val Verde. It, uh, that was back in the day. Yet we need a place that we could look at what I would define as our Mecca. And uh, Allen Square could be the center we should look to go toward. Uh, if you can imagine having a Williamsburg effect or similarities in this township, where if it can become a point where our young youngsters and communities can see what an ex-slave did to raise up to the highest point could possibly be, create a township. It was what I call the essence of um, the Nanguza Saba. It was a coming together of a tribal way to do so, to show our self-reliance and independence and entrepreneurial um, um, energy and synergy. And so uh, going forward, that, should, that place should be a huge global point where people from around the world want to come say, we want to see where ex-slaves and come in and they have a, a Mecca that was, was, was a town that's completely refurbished. Let us walk through the past. Let us go to the, the colonel's house. Let us go to the, uh, the grocery store. Let us go to the church. Let us go through the different homes and try to experience the feeling that um, was relevant during that day and feel the vibrations even today. So as we prepare going into 2022, and it's an honor to have Roscoe, Mr. Owens, Jazz Zone as one of our collaborative partners, as well as um, our beautiful Linda Sams Morgan, Morgan, and uh, James Janice, and some other folks is coming to put this together. And again, we want this to be uh, the gospel, I mean, the blues festival. We want to grow this to be comparable to the Monterey Jazz Festival in 1974. In order to do that, uh, we have a synergistic approach with other folks coming together and visionaries. And I understand with the zone, we want that to be the zone, our blue zone, our Amen. historical zone. And, <laughs> and with Mr. Uh, Roscoe and his dynamic uh, energy, and it's a synergistic approach and just talking about the concept, I'm really empowered and enthused to have this degree of participation, support, and empowering us to move forward. So again, it's the fundamental step we're moving, sir. That's basically well, where we're going. You, you know what I, what I want to do right there because you're, you're right at the point. At the point of what we, we need and what we have done here with Success Express is partners in success. And we need partners in success to be sure that that turns into that particular kind of festival. The, yes, sir. The, the jazz festival. The, the, the festival they have out here with all those youngsters coming out and uh, the con uh, Coachella, you know, because yes. 
But I got something to say about that. But I'm gonna let Kijana tell us about those partners in success. These are people and other folks we need to pick up to uh, support what we're doing, uh, Dr. Easy Oko. Well. Marketing Solutions presents your virtual video podcast studio. Let the Success Express team help bring your podcasting dreams to life. Here's what we do. We help you come up with show ideas, design graphics for your show, set up your podcast studio, and run the back end of your show. So what do you do? Be ready for your show. Make sure your guests are ready. Log into the virtual studio. Turn your cameras on and go. Not sure you're ready to go live on a monthly or a weekly basis? You can get the Try Us Out Success Special. It's only $97 with free design setup. All you got to do is try us out, and I guarantee you're going to want more. So get set up today with your virtual video podcast studio from Success Express Marketing Solutions. So go online to Success Express MKTG, and we'll get you set up today. Sign up now and get our free ebook, Modern Podcasting, that'll teach you all the techniques you need to know to get your podcast started today. Welcome to the Jazz Zone. Allow the Jazz Zone to make the next event enjoyable and entertaining. The Jazz Zone is great for private parties, weddings, festivals, fundraisers, grand openings, and corporate affairs. Move up to the next level of entertaining with the Jazz Zone. Check out our website at jazzzone.net. That's J-A-Z-Z-Z-O-N-E.net. Or call the Jazz Zone at 626-798-6848. My name is Kijana Owens. I am co-founder of Success Express Marketing Solutions. Our business is cultivating more business for your business. I want to tell you real quick about our program that is one of the most comprehensive business development uh, online marketing support programs out there, which is the VASP, V-A-S-P, Virtual Assistant Support Program. This system allows you to operate and run your business while we help monitor and help you cultivate more business for your business online. Contact us at 909-686-1698 and visit us online at successexpressmarketing.com. Look forward to helping you take your business to the next level. Reminds me of the brother that sings is uh, my father's horn. I said that's my daddy's drums. Anyway, 
bring uh, uh, easy. Ooh, wait. You know, first of all, I, I want I want to share with you, and I am very proud of my son, Mr. Kijana Owens. That brother yes, has, has shine major light. He's created all of that. It's just not that he's just playing that <clears throat> information in the back. So even in sponsorship, it's like, hey, you know, you can sponsor this. We can also pay in that sponsorship and get you a branding. Because see, most people need to be branded. It's just like what we're talking about with Allensworth. Right. Allensworth has been there for years and years and years. The understanding of Allensworth has not been included in our community conversation because right. it's not been branded uh, uh, uh to the to that aspect you know just like they gave you know put the information back on brown beach i know you that's right you are the, the, the beach, kid yeah. up there you know they stopped the train from coming they stopped the water from coming so they killed the town so they need to pay for killing the town how much is that worth well a, a couple of things uh <clears throat> looking at bruce beach and uh equal which is in uh, off of pico Places where blacks were lived and they were kicked out and moved out. And the fact that we have a town that was almost, almost <clears throat> obliterated as uh, when uh, when the town started out. Uh, one person that I like to give credit to is two people. Number one, the colonel, the visionary, and then the preserver. Um, there was a person who moved there in 1931 uh, as a migrant worker, was going to the uh, to the school and was taught by Alwertha Hall. His name was uh, Ed, uh, Mr. Ed Cornelius Pope, and he used to sit on the steps at the Heisman's grocery store and listen to the stories of the Buffalo, Buffalo soldiers. And <clears throat> they moved out of there into the colonel's house, and Mr. Pope would put on his uniform and pretend he was the colonel. He went on and moved on to become a draftsman for the uh, state of California and uh, for the parks. And when he found out that there was going to be, uh, they were coming to destroy the park and create a cattle farm or some, some, some type of event, he became horrified and went ahead and got a hold of all the black historians, wrote legislation to have that area designated as a historical spot. And with that request, sent it up to the then governor, Ronald Reagan, who figured, well, I'll give the Negro something and not recognizing what was given to us. <clears throat> and that became the genesis of the, the park. And they started refab refurbishing the park, <clears throat> restoring some of the buildings. And today it's a replication of the town. Now it's only, the state only purchased 230 acres out of the few thousand acres that uh, consisted of the town. And there is a small community that's behind Allensworth State Historical Park. <clears throat> Mr. Pope went ahead and bought um, 10 and a half acres as well. As Mr. Uh, there's another gentleman called Mr. Allen, who was also <clears throat> an active Buffalo soldier. So people come out and, and they have events there. And to me, it's just not having events. It's having something what I call edutainment. We need to let folks know what does that look like. And again, to give you a quick example uh, before going to, to uh, Allensworth, <clears throat> is the idea of February Black History. And people recognize how you celebrate history. Uh, we're preparing for this February, and the idea is to call edutainment. And th the idea of promoting and have what I call, who am I? And I was talking to some folks that are, uh, that would like to portray certain characters. So we would have someone um, <clears throat> like, uh, that would play uh, Mary Pleasant, that would play Queen Nzinga. And I met this one brother who does a <clears throat> one person show. His name is Sloan, and he does Toussaint, Leo Vitor. And what they would do is come on the stage and give a description of who they were. And at the end, we'll say, I am Toussaint. I am Mary Pleasant. I am uh, Antoine Shakur. I am Angela Davis. It gives a historical context done in a theatrical format. So in between the acts, they would have figure five of these, uh, six would come on. And in between, the music would have that in, that introduction, who they were. And that educates the folks. That's just in February. And do that for the next eight um, events, so six times eight. That's 48 individuals. A lot of folks don't know nothing about. And that becomes a form of inducting and getting, uh, like I said, I'm glad to see this last event we had, Black Lives Matter came out. And those young folks that were so in 
enthralled and enthused to see that township. They they just so they were overactive, and when they re, re, um, recited one of their antras and then showing power to the people and lifting their, lifting their hands up in power, I said, "Wow, that took me back in the day." And now it's getting to their hands, but at the same time, allow them to say, "How can we grow this vision?" Now moving on to uh, the blues festival, what's that going to look like? We're working on that. So the idea is having conferences there, and if I can get ASCAC to come out and, and do a, uh, a a lecture there with the, Dr. Wayne Nobles, that would bring a lot of folks, a lot of old school and young school, to be a part of that. So looking to get to get some of our scholars to come out and lecture and de dedicate part of that, whatever it doesn't matter what the event would be, our scholar would come out and speak in a scholarly way in terms of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So those are the things, one has to have a visionary, like I said, when Mr. Pope saw the town, envisioned that town being preserved, now we need to go beyond that vision and increase, expand that vision and say, aha, uh -huh, we have our Mecca. People come from around the world, so I come to the United States first place, and I'm going to go, <clears throat> I'm going to see this black town. I like to experience you know, on the, on the West Coast. And say uh, this is this is us. This is our capital, and that would draw global attention, global participation, and it would create a sense of economics because you can actually make the town come into a living time frame where you go back in time, in that real time, and say, here people dressed in period attire, talking about history, experiencing the ambiance of 1908. But remember, 1908 is when when you realize when um, 2008 when Obama announced his uh, presidency in Springfield. Yet people don't recognize the Springfield riot in 1904 and then 1908 was um, uh, the genesis of the Urban League and then the genesis of the NAACP. So that has historical, 1908 is a symbolic reason. So going back to 1908, then how can you have folks react and understand what's going on there and constantly telling our story that we came out sojourning for our own place of independence, self-reliance. And that's the that's the, our strategy going all the way back to um, to David Walker. Going back to Martin Delaney spoke to that. Um, my man, um, Marcus Garvey. But at the same time, you also have what I call a uh, Nipsey Hussle is the new Marcus Garvey of the 24th, 21st century. So these young folks have somebody they can connect to because he spoke to and addressed their their young generational needs. So that's an example, buying property, uh, embracing culture, entrepreneurialism, those are the things that drive a community. And you know, the four pillars of any community, first is culture, education, economics, and politics. And unfortunately, we're only standing on two of the legs. You know, we're losing our culture, trying to get reculturated. We have no real politician, we have politicking, and then, and then education, we're, we're falling behind on that. So we need to re bolster that who we are as a people. And if I look at my eye, and this is, and looking at Queen Night Chapsut, all of her carvings was know thyself. So having people come to experience ourselves yesterday, today, and tomorrow, that would be a form of legacy. And I also tell the story too. Um, this was back uh, quite some years when a young man got off the bus. <clears throat> he was, I, I don't call him, I don't use the term gangbanger, I use the term Gedonetian warrior. And as this warrior was strolling through the township, he started looking around and, you know, he was sagging and, and he saw that people didn't look like him. So he started pulling his pants up and walking around like, we did this. There was a that moment in time, his deep psyche made him resonate who he was. There was pride in that. He may have dropped his pants and started sagging and he got back on the bus. But the idea that moment transformation, can you imagine what that looked like to our community? So people walking along the road, speaking, and uh, it's like going back in time. And it, it, you have to go back in time to recognize our humanity, but it gives us a, a step above other cultures that we re enculturate ourselves by engaging. And one thing we need, and using this as a platform, we need volunteers, we need uh, folks' membership, because like anything else, we can have a membership of 250, 300. It does not have much to demand. But if I have a membership of anywhere between uh, 15 or 20,000, the state will set up. So, wow, there's a constituency. Now you, got, you have political clout because the organization has such a large constituency, they can demand all the things we need to have demanded based upon uh, GEIG, that's the Global Economic Impact Group. That's a young group, black group that's coming through, that's going to help refurbish or uh, uh, take that town to the next level. But again, it's incumbent upon everyone to say, well, let me engage with level I can engage in by number one, becoming a member. <clears throat> number two, let me become a member 
Number three, let me expand this township, get that back into the schools where our children can come out and take busloads to experience that. That's our living, uh, our, our living history. So there's a lot of things we can do socially, economically, and uh, culturally to expand. And we need, because right now people have to understand, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, if you not realize, we're back into 1877 all over again. And one has to look at history to say what happened in 1877. Well, that's the end of Reconstruction and Jim Crow came in. So we can see exactly what's happening to us today. But the synergistic way a lot of young folks are saying Black Lives Matter, the humanity that people are looking at and saying, ah, the world looked around and says, you know, well, Black Lives do matter because a lot of young folk out there, the matter of people, Japan, England, <clears throat> the globe, China, all had signs that Black Lives Matter. So again, that's our preface is going into the next millennium, pulling that, 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 that consciousness saying, yes, we do matter. Yet our township matters, our economics matter, our intellect matter, and again, we're back again, present and accounted for. So that's basically some of the things. I don't go into a whole deeper well, homily. You know no, that, but, <laughs> yeah, if you went into some of the things, you went into any more, you'd be talking about how they came over here on them chains and them boats and all of that. Because the history, there's no joke, but, it, right. some of, but, but the taught part of it is their history because it is his story. But Kijana, I want to tell our story. Tell him something about the supporters of the podcast studio. And we want to thank those people that are supporting and sponsoring our podcast. part of the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce. We have 12 chapters from the desert to the sea. There's a chamber near you someplace so you'll be able to do business and fellowship and be able to find the contacts that you need. We help turn contacts into contracts. One of the things that we do, we give you access to capital. So if you're looking at participating in a business, come to one of our mixers at the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce where we network from the desert to the sea, from Barstow to Temecula, from Palm Springs to LA, always an opportunity to network. If you need some information about the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce or one of our fantastic events such as our Celebrity Golf Tournament, our film festival coming up, give us a call or check us out online. Our website is blackchamberofcommerce.org or you can give us a call at 888-466-7408. That's the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce. And my name is Rich Wallace and that's my story and I'm sticking to it.
coming from the Groove Yard, I suggest anybody that has checked out the Groove Yard or other podcasts done by uh, Success Express that branding is the answer to the target of consistency, consistently putting your brand of what you do out there. The Insta Stinger, whew, quick brand. The virtual podcast, great opportunity to bring in your network. The VASP program, V-A-S-P, is an awesome program of continuation to be sure that your clients are up to date with who you are and what you do. So bring on my brother back, my, my, my reverend, my doctor, my friend. Uh, we can and we do and we did and we're going to continue. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, Reverend Baba uh, Ezeoku, for earlier this morning to come on as a living legend, not only withstanding the living legend, our podcast, Mary Tribe 55, our men's division. Your royalty is exquisite. The, the photo on to the left has you, and then I think there was International Jazz Day. We're up there. There's some very, very important people in there. And then the one at the bottom, it's, it has myself, Linda Morgan, yourself, and some absolutely outstanding uh, jazz musicians. And I have to point out a brother in the hat, my Uncle Curtis Kirk, uh, uh, rest in peace. And those that are in those photos that are resting in peace, we appreciate the gift that you gave us to be in concert with you, as I am in the gift that you have uh, given us, uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend uh, Ezeoku, because of your stature, your grace, and your knowledge, and I appreciate that. That's the end of our show. We're about to go. I'm going to see you soon in the Groove Yard right down there in Lemur Park. You know, we're going to be at Barbara Morrison's uh, for the third Thursday of the month in November, and we'll talk about that too. I'm looking forward to being with you, Brother Ezioku. Yes, Have sir. Last Thank word. you. Give me a, a two-second last word. Hotep and peace to everyone. My Hotep. Know thyself. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kijan Owens. That will conclude the groove yard for this time on this day. You know.